Thank you, Mr. Larry Martin and Gail Smith of Folly Hog uh, for receiving us today. Southern Cameroonians are very anxious to know how you are going to assist in expediting the, the process of the reclaiming of their independence and the eradication of the occupation forces of La Republique du Cameroon from their territory. So what would you tell them? Well, thank you, Larry. And I think the most important thing we want to share first is that it's a great honor and a privilege for us to represent the people of Southern Cameroon. They are long-suffering people, they are well-educated, smart people, and they have very large and strong hearts. So there's much that we want to do, both legally and in terms of working with the, political, the government at the international level and in Washington. But again, this is founded on fine people and we're very privileged to be here. Uh, I don't know, Larry, if you want to start with litigation or you want me to start with political things, but we can go in either direction. Well, first let me just echo what you said. I mean, it's a real honor for me, speaking personally, to be able to participate in the advancement of this cause. I mean, this is something that I think, speaking for us both, we feel very, very strongly about, and we are thrilled to, to have the privilege of being of assistance. We've had the privilege of helping other peoples in similar situations in the past. I work very closely with His Holiness the Dalai Lama of Tibet. We work very closely with the Polisario and the people of the Western Sahara, um, much of which is illegally occupied by Morocco. We're helping them return to reclaim their country. And I think to, to take a quote from one of the great civil rights leaders of the United States, Martin Luther King Jr., he said that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And that is precisely the way that we view our work for the people of Cameroon, for the, the justice of their cause, for the righteousness of their cause, and we think they have a strong stand both in legal authenticity and in, in their conscience. And I think it's also important to understand that the process going forward will be a multi-pronged approach. It will have political elements, it'll have public relations elements, and it'll have more traditional legal elements, potential lawsuits. And I think one of the exciting things about this, speaking for myself, is the opportunity it gives for somebody like myself, who's an international litigator, to work with somebody like Gare, who is a much more seasoned politician and much more knowledgeable uh, about uh, interacting with the United Nations, with the United States government, and in particular on matters like this relating to human rights. Well, thank you, Larry. And for my particular background that Larry is alluding to, I worked for President Clinton for a number of years. I ran the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor headed the U.S. delegation to the U.N. Human Rights Commission, and have worked at a, a number of different international fora to promote respect for human rights and democratic freedoms. And as the Charter of the United Nations says, all people have the inalienable right to self-determination, and that is precisely the case with Southern Cameroonians. Yes, now, uh, may I find out from you uh, particularly, is there anything that a fully hard law firm may be doing to assist in securing the release? of uh, the leaders of the Southern Cameroonian people and many other uh, individuals of Southern Cameroon arrested and, uh, you know, charged, given trumped up charges on the, under the terrorism law. Yes, to be perfectly candid, one of the biggest challenges we face in helping the people of Southern Cameroons is that most people in the world, including most people in the United States, I say with some embarrassment, have no idea about this conflict, have no idea that their leader is being jailed on trumped up charges, have no idea that there's torture being committed. And a lot of our work is originally to educate, educate our own people, educate our legislators, ed educate our members of Congress, educate members of the State Department and in the White House of these abuses. And then upon educating these people, rallying around it, having the U.S. government speak out as it should to address these wrongs, and having it work in international forums, such as the United Nations, where it's applicable. Well, I think another angle that we will be pursuing is uh, drawing the attention of organizations like Amnesty International, Human's right, Human Rights Watch, to, to these problems. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's important in its own right, but it also serves an important practical purpose in the sense that drawing the attention of the international community to these abuses, to these wrongs, to the people who are wrongfully detained, um, 
can very well serve uh, the purpose of having them released because even the government of La Republique has a sense of shame. And if we can make them feel shame, uh, I think that will itself have a tangible benefit to people in Southern Cameroons. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.